New charges against a friend of Connor Betts, the man who carried out the mass shooting. Authorities revealed today that on Friday, they arrested a 24-year-old from Kettering, that's a suburb of Dayton, named Ethan Colley. Now, they don't, they don't accuse him of anything, of knowing anything about the shooting, but here's what they say, that he has admitted that he bought four bets some of the items that Betts used in the shooting attack, including body armor, part of the AR-15 weapon, a part of it that's not federally regulated, and also the 100-round magazine that uh, authorities say was used in the shooting. Now, the Dayton police had said that Betts had two of them. The U.S. attorney and the FBI today say that uh, Kali admits that he bought the one used in the shooting. You're looking at the two there. Uh, on the screen on the bottom. That's the picture that the Dayton police had put out. But in any event, they say he had no indication that he knew Betts would conduct this attack, that he did not intentionally participate in anything to do with the shooting. But what they say is that earlier this year, Collie bought body armor, part of the weapon, the magazine, and told the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation and ATF agents who talked to him that he did it because Betts asked him to keep it in Collie's apartment so that Betts could hide it from Betts's parents. And then 10 weeks ago, according to court documents, Betts came to the house, the two of them put the uh, item together, put the rifle together and kept it there. And then they say about six to eight weeks ago, Betts came back, retrieved the weapon, got the body armor and the magazine, and they also say that uh, these two men were friends. Kali says that he told the federal agents that the two of them did marijuana and, as it says in the court documents, acid, presumably LSD, four to five times a week from 2014 to 2015. Now, the actual charges against Kali today are separate from the shooting. The charges are that he bought a handgun and when he did so, uh, he checked on the federal form that he was not a drug user they say that was a lie, and they say, that, so that's one charge. And then the second charge is continuing to possess a handgun while he is a drug user. That's, that makes you unqualified under federal law to have a weapon if you're a regular drug user. So there's no allegation that the weapon that he bought, the handgun, had anything to do with the shooting. Instead, they say he bought these items for Betts at Betts's request so that his parents wouldn't know he was getting them. But the FBI and the U.S. attorney both repeatedly said during a news conference today that there's no indication that Kali knew what Betts was planning. That on August 4th, uh, special agents with the FBI and ATF initially spoke with Mr. Kali uh, on Sunday, August 4th, which was uh, the day uh, the day of the when the shooting had taken place early that morning. And at that time of that initial interview, Mr. Kali indicated uh, that uh, he had purchased body armor and a firearm accessory for Connor Betts, the shooter, um, who had committed the shooting earlier that day. And during the course of that initial interview, which was at Mr. Colley's home in Kettering, agents smelled marijuana and observed in plain sight what appeared to be a bong and also what appeared to be a micro Draco pistol. Um, then later that week, on Thursday, August 8th, FBI agents re-interviewed Mr. Colley, this time at his place of work. Um, and Mr. Colley indicated to the agents at that time that he was a concealed carry. Uh, he told them during the second interview that he had done, quote unquote, hard drugs with Connor Betts, as well as marijuana and acid, four or five times a week. Um, in from 2014 to 2015. And then when the agents asked Kali how often he used drugs, uh, Kali indicated that he smoked marijuana every day and uh, had been doing so for about 10 years. Uh, agents obtained from a federal firearms licensee the ATF Form 4473 that Kali had completed in order to purchase the Micro Draco pistol uh, that agents observed upon initially interviewing him. Uh, that form was dated uh, in May 9th, 2019. And on that form, Kali had indicated no in response to the question, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? At that point, the agents obtained a federal search warrant for Kali's person and his residence 
when they executed uh, the search warrant of Kali, uh, the, the search warrant of his person, he again admitted to being a regular user of illegal drugs, including marijuana and psychedelic mushrooms, which he said he grew in his residence. Um, uh, he, did, he admitted that he did remember filling out the Form 4473 and indicating falsely that he uh, was not a user of illegal drugs when in fact he was because he knew that if he had answered it truthfully, he would not have received the firearm that he was buying. He also acknowledged uh, that he had purchased four, uh, four bets, body armor, as well as um, the upper receiver of an AR-15 weapon and the 100 round double drum magazine that was ultimately used by Betts in the August 4th shooting in the Oregon district. Uh, Kali indicated that he purchased these items for Betts and stored them at Kali's residence in order to um, assist Betts in hiding the items from Betts's parents. Uh, Kali admitted to recalling approximately uh, 10 weeks earlier, so middle to end of May, uh, sitting with Betts in Kali's apartment and assembling the uh, AR-15 uh, accessory, and then further that uh, a couple weeks after that, when the double drum uh, magazine arrived, uh, Betts coming and taking possession of that uh, drum as well as the body armor. Um, the agents executed the search warrant of Kali's apartment. Um, they recovered the Draco pistol, the Taurus semi-automatic pistol, ammunition, drug paraphernalia, a clear glass pipe, uh, and what is commonly referred to as a bong, as well as what appeared to be mushrooms. Um, Betts was, or I'm sorry, uh, Kali was then taken into custody on Friday evening. Uh, he made his initial appearance here in federal court Friday evening and um, pursuant to a criminal complaint that is being unsealed today. Uh, these charges uh, that expose him up to a uh, possible term of imprisonment of up to 15 years in prison, uh, and the case will move forward next with a detention hearing on Wednesday. I want to make a couple quick points uh, about this case, uh, and then I will invite any questions that you may have. Uh, the points are, number one, again, to be clear, there is no evidence and no allegation in this criminal complaint that Kali intentionally uh, participated in the planning of Betts' August 4th shooting. So I don't want that to be misconstrued. And that's not what this case is about. But what this case is about is in the course of this ongoing investigation into the August 4th shooting, anyone who is discovered to have any criminal culpability for any act that ultimately uh, is discovered through the investigation or contributed in any way to the events on August 4th is going to be held criminally responsible. And more generally, uh, not only is possessing controlled substances illegal, but possessing controlled substances and possessing a firearm is itself a crime. And that is not something that federal agents who are investigating this or any matter are going to ignore. And that is why Mr. Colley has been charged in federal court um, Friday afternoon and unsealed here today.